Hey guys, in this video we're going to be building out the Spintech Race 1. This is a frame for 2.5 inch propellers and 11OX motors. It's got this very unique looking polycarbonate canopy that's vacuum, uh, vacuum form molded. Got a bunch of parts here, uh, some TPU parts, some nylon uh, screws and standoffs. It looks kind of complicated, however there's a lot of photos on the Spintech website that shows how this is built and it's actually not that difficult. Uh, I'll just show you the frame here and very uh, interesting carbon. It's got uh, coating on here. It's like laminated. So it's kind of glossy. And I believe this is 4 millimeter carbon. So it's really thick. So yeah, it comes in exactly 4 millimeters. So pretty unlikely that you're going to ever break this unless you're uh, habitually driving us into the concrete at 100 miles an hour, but you can see it's uh, quite stiff. I'm trying to flex it and it doesn't even doesn't even budge. So the arms are kind of skinny, which is kind of nice. So it's going to have uh, it's going to sh should be uh, be able to cut through the air, with less wind resistance here in the arms, which is important for the smaller props uh, for the two and a half inch props. So things should be pretty fast. Be building this out with the um, Spintech 1106 8000 kV motors, of course, and a uh, the HGLC F425 stack, which has the OSD and 4-in-1 uh, BL Heli S 25 amp ESCs, and of course uh, the Runcam MicroSwift. This is what this is specifically designed for. So the MicroSwift and the VTX 03. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll mount some parts on here, the motors and probably the ESCs, and then I'll sh we'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll do the uh, FPV system last, and I think the canopy will go, obviously go on last as well. And, we'll, and uh, looking forward to flying this, so let's get this build started. Okay, so I got pretty much most of the stuff installed here. Uh, I'm using a Freebie F4 fly tower, so it's got the F4 CPU with the uh, Betaflight OSD, and I'm flashing Betaflight 3.2 on here, RC5. Uh, this one comes with a 4 in 1 20 amp ESC with BL Heli S. And just showing you how some of the stuff's installed. The little motor guards are installed with the soft mounting under the motor here. And so you gotta make sure that uh, it's pretty tight. You might, we might want to use some Loctite here, make sure these screws don't come loose. And then I just have my motor wires twisted up and underneath soldered on to the bottom side of the ESCs. So pretty pretty easy build overall. You can see the motor wires underneath here. Got my XT60, I'm sorry, XT30 connector on. And I've already wired up my FlySky receiver and my FPV system. This is the VTX03. This is what it's designed for. And I got a little camera lead here for the uh, Microswift, and this is the mount that's included for the Microswift. You got these basically you got two screws right there, and the nuts should hold that on. It's a little uh, the TPU here is a little floppy. Uh, might want they might want to uh, stiffen that up. I don't know. Let's see how much how much gel that we got. Um, but yeah, you got the four super long screws. These are these M2 nylon screws. They go all the way through the uh, ESC and flight controller stack and then you use the little TPU uh, spacers in between the main plate and the ESCs and the ESCs and the flight controller and then secured with nuts here and those are the four screws there so not a whole lot to this build. You got some standoffs here, you got this one standoff in the back and that's going to be holding on the top of the canopy in the back and then there's a smaller standoff that goes in the front here that's going to hold on the canopy here and there's one hole in the back there and then one hole in the front there. The VTX antenna goes out the back here. There's two antenna straws that go through these two side holes here but um, I'm not going to be using those because I only have one antenna I'm going to have the antenna go out the back. Okay so here's my progress so far in the build. Almost done here. You can see the uh, long screws for the uh, flight controller stack mounting probably cut those off. I just left them on there. And uh, there's supposed to be another 3D printed part that you can print out uh, for the VTX-03. Uh, probably wouldn't fit in here because I got the receiver in there. 
and I'm using a fly sky receiver with a single antenna so uh, I'm just going to have the antenna uh, come out the bottom here like this and have my rubber bands holding on the motor wires and you have a long screw that goes into this standoff here and this 3D printed part that secures the back of the canopy and you got this small standoff here and these two screws that secure the front part of the canopy and then you got the uh, mount there for the Runcam Micro. It's a little bit on the floppy side so we'll have to see how much vibration or jello we get in the video. Hopefully it won't be too bad. And I'm shaking this thing and I don't see anything. These aren't really moving around. I got the VTX-03 is kind of secured here by the hole. Uh, so it should be alright. So at this point just got to put the uh, props on. Going to put some foam padding on the bottom here to uh, prevent the batteries from getting dented by these screws and then I'll put some rubber bands on here to, uh, to secure my batteries and that ought to do it and then I'll, I'll be back with a lot of stuff on and we'll get a final weight measurement. One thing that I think I might be a concern I just thought of is that these are just nylon screws and if you have a hard crash uh, this could get stripped out or this could break and then this could break as well. This canopy is probably not going to break, but I mean, I can I can wiggle the canopy around like I can see it's moving. So I think in a hard crash you could strip those screws out. So it'd be kind of nice to have a few spares of those screws just in case you crash and need to find these. But they're not that uh, hard to find. You can pick them up at Banggood or uh, my RC Mart. Uh, they're not that expensive. So just keep in mind you might you may need to get some spare screws to secure your canopy in the future, but the canopy fits really nice. And uh, and this side you got easy access to your micro USB port as well, so so far looking pretty good. Okay, so here it is completely finished and I've got some DYS three bladed props on here. These are actually the uh, 3045 tri-blades and in the rear uh, this frame fits three inch props no problem. You can see plenty of clearance. Uh, but in the front I had to trim them down a little bit otherwise they would strike the canopy. You can see right there. So I uh, trimmed them down to about 2.8 inches. So uh, we'll have to see how these do. I have a feeling that, that the three bladed will do better than the four bladed props. It's just a theory of mine so I'm going to give this a try. Uh, normally I would fly with the four bladed Rotorex 2535s. So obviously uh, in this setup here it's not multi-GP uh, spec. So you'd have to use the Rotorex 2535s if you want to fly in the multi-GP races with this one. Um, one of the things I want to find out is what the motor to motor distance is. It's supposed to be a true X frame. I'm thinking it's more than 120 millimeters. Yeah, so the motor to motor distance is actually a little bit more than 130 millimeters, like about 132 millimeters. So it's a pretty big frame. Um, I believe it's uh, a true X. So, so uh, side to side is about 92, and front to back is exactly the same. So it is a true X frame. All right, so let's see how much this thing weighs fully built. And we're coming in at 88 and a half grams. So a little beefy side, but you know, obviously much bigger motors here, the 1106 motors. So. It's going to definitely weigh a lot more than the typical micro drones that I've been building recently. I think that these 1106 motors will have no problem pushing this weight around. Absolutely no problem at all. So as I mentioned before, I flashed Betaflight 3.2 on here. And as you can see, I've reversed my props. I don't know if you guys can tell that, but my props are spinning in like this. Because I'm tired of having the props spin this way and having grass cover up my camera lens every time I land in the grass or crash in the grass. So. This is actually better, although grass then ends up going into your flight controller, but I prefer that over the camera. At least then, if I land, I can actually still see and take off again and fly. So I'll put a card in the corner for how to flash Beta Flight 3.2 to these Omnibus F3 and F4 boards. I did a video on that already. Um, right now I'm just going to do stock PIDs on this on 2S. Should be fine. I uh, don't recommend flying 3S on these 1106 motors. I've done that before and they get way, way, way too hot. So. Um, uh, just be, be aware of that if you're going to fly uh, 3S on these 1106 motors, I would not use more than a 2 inch prop. That would be the maximum. 
but anything like big like this, you're just gonna have to go, go with three. Uh, sorry, two, with just two S only, not three S. So this one, go ahead. I'll take it out to the field, and we'll get a little line of sight and some FPV. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, it's too much power. I'm barely on the throttle. I just wanted to like rocket ship away. Look at that, it looks so nice in the air. It's a little windy, but this thing looks so nice in the air. Let's give it a little punch out test here. Whoa, that was not even half throttle, and I don't want to lose this. It looks too nice to lose. These motors are crazy. Let's try another one here. Oh boy, that was three quarters for like half, not even a quarter of a second, just blipped it and it wanted just to go away. Wow. All right, let's fly it around a little bit here. Oh, it just wants to go, go, go. I like the sound of these DYS props on here. They sound real nice. Yeah, it's got a lot of power. All right, let's try some flips here. Oh yeah, floaty, floaty. Don't need to blip the throttle that much to flip it. Oh yeah. I better check, check the motor temps here. Let's see if they're okay. The tune sounds good. Everything's soft mounted, so should be totally fine. I am running Betaflight 3.2 with the dynamic filter on, so if you soft mount everything, everything should be fine. Yeah, they're not even they're not even warm. Yeah, the temps are totally fine. The motor, the the, the props sound good. I mean, there's no oscillations. No fluttering, a lot of power. Uh, I'll go ahead and FPV it now. It looks looks really good. So I'll start off with this uh, flight demo by saying that if uh, you're a beginner pilot, I would not recommend building this. This is going to be way too fast for you. You're going to need a very large space, and this will very quickly get away from you. This is basically like flying a five-inch copter and just on a smaller scale. And if you're intimidated with speed or can't fly in a small area um, without losing it, then definitely do not build this. If you like speed, then yeah, this is the one for you. This is lots of power and very, very fast. So just keep that in mind. So the PIDs I'm using are just the stock ones from Betaflight 3.2. Um, probably gonna do a little bit of tuning and we'll put a CLA dump in the description at some point. Not sure when exactly, you might to check back later. Uh, but the, what you're seeing right now in flight is the stock pits.
I should mention is that you're going to need very good batteries for this. Definitely uh, do not run this on 3S unless you like magic smoke. Uh, 2S I would recommend for sure, but you're going to need a bigger battery because it's just going to draw down your power really quick. I'm running a, I think it's a 650 2S LiPo and 75C I believe, but I don't even think that's enough because the battery sags from 8.4 volts to 7 volts almost immediately. I'd recommend trying to find something like a 700, 750 uh, 2S in the 100 to 150 C range, somewhere in there, because uh, um, you're just you're, the flight times weren't weren't very good. I won't, I'm even with that kind of battery. I'm, uh, I think I'm only going to be able to get like three minutes. I'm getting like two minutes right now before I kind of need to land. So you're going to need really good batteries because these motors and um, the props here they really suck down the amps. So that's sort of the price you have to pay if you want ultimate speed. Is you're just going to have really crappy battery life. So. <laughs> No way around that, fortunately.